Hi guys, Philip de Bella, and you're listening to Flashcast by PDB. Today I want to talk about balanced leadership. And of course, I get asked a lot about leadership and different styles of leadership, and there are many different styles. So out from the onset, I'm going to say the best leadership is authentic leadership. So those leaders that are the best to me are those that keep things authentic. And in order to keep things authentic, they need to know themselves. So we're going to cover some some tips that I believe make balanced leadership possible, but it all starts with authenticity. So straight off the bat, um, those people that are, that are great at leading people are those that keep everything real um, and show their true person. But um, some points to go on to. So with balanced leadership, and the concept of balanced leadership to me means that everything works in harmony, is that when the time needs to push hard, we're pushing hard. When the time is to consolidate, you're consolidating. There's a time for empathy. There's a time for, for um, you know growth. There's a time for consolidation. It's knowing how to make the whole orchestra. So something I talk about, and I use analogies a lot. If you've listened to some of the flashcasts, you'll know that I love analogies because it helps us with visualization, is the balanced leader is the conductor at the front of an orchestra. So if you think of the orchestra and the different elements, not everybody's as loud as the, you know, the drum section or as beautiful and sweet as the string section, you know, or the sexy and sassiness of the saxophone and, and, and so on. So you get the picture that the best balanced leaders are those very similar to a conductor in an orchestra. They know how to maneuver the different sections, the different teams around to get the desired result. So how do they do this? Well, strengths-based leadership is important. So understanding the strengths of your team. And if you have never done the um, strengths testing, then I suggest you get your team strengths tested. Uh, JanaDebella.com, my wife, who's been um, on the show before, she's actually a qualified strengths coach. Um, so you can have a look at her stuff on her website, Jana Debella, G-I-A-N-N-A-D-I-B. EAA.com. Have a look at uh, what she does around strengths-based testing because it's really important to know the strengths of your different team members so that you can actually get the best out of them. This also enables you to focus on what you do best rather than get fixated on flaws. And I see a lot of leaders want to get fixated on people's flaws versus them working to people's strengths. And it really does get the best out of people when you're focusing on their strengths. Ensure to surround yourself with people who have complementary strengths. You know, I see people want to build clones. Clones don't work. If you look at another analogy of the soccer team, um, the strikers have different skills to the defense, um, but they both work in harmony. If the strikers don't score, you don't win. If the defense don't defend, you don't win. So make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people that have complementary strengths. Again, bring it back to uh, the concert band, the conductor. You need to conduct the different people around uh, based on their strengths. Don't overdo your strengths or anyone else's because they can turn into weaknesses. So you've got to make sure that you use the right amount of level of attention onto those strengths, uh, but don't overdo them because they can become your weakness. An example there is one, my number one strength is restorative, which means I'm a problem solver. And at times, if I focus too much on problem solving, I can actually become uh, quite irritating uh, when rather than listening, I'm, I'm jumping in to try and fix problems. So your strength can become your weakness. So make sure you don't overdo those strengths. One of my classic things is to lead from beside and behind. I think that the best leaders are always working from beside people or behind them and, and helping them move forward rather than standing at the front and looking behind them and not seeing anyone there. I say be a conductor, not a dictator. Um, again, using that concept band analogy. The team's moral performance is is always going to be based on how good the leader is. So great leaders build strong morale. They know how to inspire their team and build strong morale. Um, and this is a key, key asset to a good leader is that they have the ability to inspire their teams. And this in turn bring, brings the morale of the team, which means people feel proud. They're emotionally engaged when they turn up to work. So remember that if you're looking to be a great balanced leader, you need to know how to inspire. You need to be inspiring. And sometimes this is tough. Of course, when you're building a business um, or you're working long hours or you're doing it tough financially, it's, it's going to be hard to inspire. But you do need to remember that if you can inspire people, especially when times are down, that that builds morale. And in turn, the morale is what drags a team to go forward. You know, And based on the back of this, are you chasing short-term wins or long-term success? So at times you're gonna to need to chase those short-term wins and sometimes you're gonna to need to plan for the long-term success. And this is something I found at Debella when I was building Debella Coffee 
there were times that we need to really accelerate and chase the short term wins because it was the right time, um, everything was aligning and happening. But then other times we had to really sit back and have a look at what the long term success looked like. So you really need to know that as the leader. You need to understand how to maneuver the team to chase those short term wins, but also plan for long term success. And remember that balance is harmony. So everything works well when it's in harmony, you know, and harmony means that at times it's going to be a lot of noise going on, at times it's going to be quiet, at times it's going to be busy, at times it's going to be slow. It's all how it comes together in harmony. Again, think of that concert band, you know, sometimes the drums are the loudest part, sometimes it's the strings, sometimes it's the wind section, but everything works in harmony. Keep focus on that desired result at the end, right? And this will help you if you know your strengths and know the strengths of your team. It ha happens if you create a team which is balanced across all the strengths and know the needs of the organization and of the individuals. I mean, once you know this sort of stuff, this enables you to do everything we've just spoken about and enact it and put it into action. And finally, don't go about creating clones, but build a team that complements each other. Balanced leaders aren't looking for clones. They're not looking for, you know, that, that Ronaldo or that Messi. If you look at Ronaldo and Messi, again, using soccer, when was the last time Portugal or Argentina won the World Cup? One person can't take a company to success alone. It requires a team. The whole concept of Ubuntu, U-B, U-N-T-U, which Steve London wrote a book about, is I am because we are. And balanced leaders understand that I am because we are. It is all about the we. It is all about how you get your teams to turn up and perform. And the way you do this is by creating emotional engagement. How do you create emotional engagement? Well, I've just shared some tips with you in the last six minutes on balanced leadership. There's a great video on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and Google lessons from a dancing guy, you'll see, and I use this one always as the video and an example of great leadership. It's a perfect way to explain in three minutes what great leaders do. Guys, in search of that balanced leadership, make sure that you make it all about people. We're in the people business, we're not in the product business. And you'll hear me say that all the time. Product doesn't turn up to buy product, it's people. You need to become an expert with people. So recapping some of those resources, jhanadabella.com, if you wanna do your strengths testing, by all means, um, she's qualified to do that for you. And also YouTube, Lessons from Dancing Guy, it's Philip DeBella. You're listening to Flashcast by PDB. If you love the material, please share it. Get your friends to subscribe. I do talk about things around personal, business, and family, not just business. So I'd love to get as many subscribers. And of course, get onto our social media, onto our Facebook page, Flashcast by PDB, and send me in your questions, your topics, things you want me to cover. This is all about being interactive. This is all about you. Be the best you can be. Until next time, take care.